Stools and Band Talk over here with our friend Alex, is work as their producer tonight. Got a big old bird burner, as my friend Sean would say tonight. Uh, a revisit back with some friends of ours. We did uh, an interview with probably about eight months ago, something like that. Oh, it was longer than that. It was pretty pretty quickly into what we were doing. For Dave, you're right. But yep. Dan was for probably about yeah, about eight months ago. ago with Dan. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Anyhow, so we're going to bring them back because they have some new news, and we don't want to. Uh, let our audience forget about uh, our good friends. Uh, go ahead, Sean, bring them on. Well, so we were talking about the, we talked about these guys a lot. And, yeah. um, you know, first band bar I, or band I saw in a bar was Brighton Rock. Second band I saw in a bar was Sven Galley. And just being absolutely gobsmacked. I mean, I, I say it all the time. If that's where the bar is, then we need to come up to the bar pretty hard because they, uh, they were fantastic. Um, definitely one of my favorite Canadian bands. They have a release coming out. Their their new single, Hurt, on June 11th with RFL Records. Yep. And we want to bring Dan Filla and Dave Wanless from Sven Galley on the show. And there they are. Dave's a little sideways. Dave's a little sideways, but he'll figure that out. He's great for bringing someone. I was going to say, Dave, Dave, you into it already? Because you're, you're kind of sideways, buddy. <laughs> I, was, I was scared you are going to fall down, brother. Oh, seeing you, gentlemen. Thanks again for being on the show. We had you both on. Um, we're here to make the announcement that June 11th, um, you guys have a release coming out. So let's start with you, Dave. Uh, tell us a little bit about what the plans are for, for that, uh, that single. Well, uh, the song is Hurt, and we recorded that um, uh, during the, the – oh, shit. We recorded that during my, during the session of three, and um, it's a song that we wrote uh, quite a while ago, and um, we brought it back to life uh, uh, during that session. And um, in the, with the introduction of, of Dan and Sean to the band, they, they made it heavier, and uh, which was uh, enlightening. Uh, for us and uh, inspiring and uh, we're looking forward to everybody seeing the video we we shot the video in an old garage um and um I'll to, you know some other different locations and i think uh, you're gonna, you guys are gonna like it it's pretty cool awesome what you dan what's your thoughts on it um i i love the song when i used to go see spang alley play live they used to play it and they used to really dig the song and uh, having a chance to play on it was uh, really cool. It was really cool. Yeah, I don't. How I don't, Dave. I don't know how long ago you wrote that song. I mean, and we, you know, we talk about you guys a lot. I mean, uh, you know, you guys were the second band I ever saw on a bar, um, and I remember you guys playing the Crazy Horse here in Dartmouth. Um, <laughs> and I told you the story before. I don't know if you remember, but I walk in and you guys are doing "Stay Awake All Night" and. You got D on one table and Andy on the other table and D grabs a guy's beer and just starts drinking it. And I'm sitting there going, holy crap, we're in trouble, right? Jeez, um, geez, pick up some guy's girlfriend. is like, holy God. Who are how long ago was that guys? song written, uh, Dave? Oh, did I lose you? Yeah, how long ago was Hurt written? Oh, Hurt, sorry. Hurt was, um, Hurt was written on the road, actually. And um, we... We, I think we used to we used to jam it when we were on tour in England uh, for sound checks. So every sound check, uh, we'd go through our thing, and then uh, we'd break into Hurt, um, and um, it kind of came together on a tour bus. Uh, and it was one of the songs that we were uh, going to release on In Wire. But as as we got home, and then and then after that tour, um, we started writing a lot more, and a lot of the stuff that we wrote while we were on the road was pushed to the wayside because a lot of fresh stuff came out, and um, we were in a in a different place of of uh, learning. Um, it, well, it, we were in a different place of experimenting with music. You know, uh, we we all listen to all different types of music. And um, the, all those influences started their making their way into the, the new material. So 
uh, hurt at that time, we got kind of pushed to the side while we went down di a different road while we were in, why were we um, were recording in Seattle. So, um, yeah, well, I guess, I guess it, uh, I guess fortunately um, at that time, hurt was, it was okay. But again, when we brought um, Dan and Sean into the mix, it, it kind of changed and felt a little different. And then you've got hurt, as of today, um, that's on three. So, you know, I guess things pop out in time and, and when they're due and, and, um, and we're looking forward to everybody seeing the video. Right on. Well, I guess for, for Sean and I remember, you might remember this too, Sean, I, I want to say it was September, 1987. And we were, <laughs> we had met this, uh, we well, were doing some, some work with a, an agent and we were, I remember packing up some lights at Richard Bonner's place, Sean. And he had just came back from Hamilton. He said, man, I just saw this band. They're going to kick your one's ass as soon as they come down here. And, and Sven Galli, and I, and I remember the movie Sven Galli. I said, oh, my God, that's kind of a cool name. And never thought about it again until we saw you. And it, it's just been pure rock and roll since. And, and to be honest, with, with Dan and Sean in the band, I, I just see it evolving even more. Your new stuff sounds so relevant. And I, I don't know if it get any heavier, but holy God, it's it's – it's just in your face, just like Svengali always has been. So I'm super uh, well, proud of it. Uh, thanks, man. Like we, um, we're really looking forward to uh, all the material that we're writing right now. We're looking forward to a, a full length album next year. And um, but in the meantime, uh, we've got a bunch of stuff for people to uh, that are, you're going to hear over the next over the summer actually. And I'm I'm uh, tomorrow I'm in the studio uh, re uh, recording a, a ballad. Oh, nice. So it's the first ballad we've written since um, Love Don't Live Here. And, you know, uh, it's as weird as it may sound, because um, we do have that heavy side, but like songs like Love Don't Live Here and Whisper in the Rain and, and stuff like that, we, we it, I don't know, it just feels right for us to do stuff like that. But this new song is called Nothing New. And um, I really like it. And I think that everybody who's heard the demo of this song um they think that's good enough and that was half-assed in, in to tell you the truth so um andy just uh um, rewrote the guitars and his guitar work on, on this song is phenomenal like the feel that he set up for me and to, to sing on i'm i'm so looking forward to uh to tomorrow to sing this song and and i'm sorry i'm late I i've been working on the song all day uh i put all my work aside and i know i'm in the studio tomorrow so now i'm just dialed in on this tune and um and after this one's done which you know i should have it i should have the lead vocal probably pretty much tucked away tomorrow we'll get the um the backing vocals and stuff on it during the week and then we're diving back into the studio because the guys um have another song for me to sing which andy curran from corny hatch is producing Right on. So, so it's <laughs> if you can smash, uh, if you can smash Coney Hatch and Sven Galley together with a little bit of Deep Purple. Oh, nice. Then you got this new track, which I think everybody's gonna love. And I've uh, we've reached out to Edwin from I, I Mother Earth, and he's gonna be singing backing tracks on that song. Oh, cool! Very cool. So it'll be Andy Curran, Edwin, Sven Galley, and you know what? It's we, we, you know, we've, we've got to that point in our careers and stuff like that, where we just want to make great music and invite friends. And, and, um, and I think, uh, you know, and, and COVID, I think, uh, made us think that way. And, and, uh, we, we played with, as I mentioned, uh, well, we, last time we spoke, uh, we did New Year's Eve with I Mother Earth. And, um, that was uh, a great time. Sean from Sven Galley is a great friend of, uh, of Edwin. And, um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to, uh, this, uh, this mash of, of guys who like to uh, like to rock, and we're looking forward to um, releasing the new song. Before uh, we started playing, uh, we were talking to Dan just about how you guys are recording. And Dan, we'll go, I guess, back to you. Um, it's kind of, uh, I, I'm guessing you kind of record in the the normal traditional format of you know scratch track, drums, bass, whatever. Um, but you guys probably aren't getting together as much. You're like, you're, you're learning the songs I'm guessing over the internet and turn, learning parts and then going to the studio and, and putting them together. Is that accurate? And I, I guess my question is when you're doing that, how do you make it actually sound like a, a group of guys that have played together for a while? Um, because we're a group of guys that's played together for a while. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, that's a great question. Um, Sean, 
the guitar player lives, like I could throw a rock and hit his house or my house. So he's over here and him and I are always down in the studio and we're jamming. So, you know, Andy, Dave and uh, TT or yeah, Andy, Dave and TT, they, they wrote all the songs. I mean, they feel it. And uh, it just comes together. Like, like I said, Hurt was recorded in Beijing, in uh, Toronto, in my basement, and, and in Hamilton in, uh, you know, two hour bits of time. And um, it was, yeah, it was, it, it was the strangest way we've ever re recorded a song before, but I really liked the way it turned out. I mean, it has the energy to it. And it has a lot of attitude. I think, you know, Dave singing is a highlight in that song. And, you know, it's, he's got the attitude, but the melody and uh, that, that Sven Galley tone is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. And, and to mention that, because Dave, we were talking to Doug Franklin from RFL the other night, and uh, Doug's a huge fan of you guys. And um, we, uh, I actually sent him a copy of the first album because he hadn't heard it in its entirety. And, he made a comment. He said he went online and he found uh, a, a recent version of you doing um, Love Don't Live Here. And he said, I'm blown away that the guy sounds better now than he did back then. How, <laughs> how would you feel about somebody saying that? Would you agree? Would you disagree? Um, to some respect, I, I well, I, I agree because I think that I don't feel apps. I don't feel any pressure now. And if people like it, great. And if they don't like it, well, that's great too. It's all good. You know what I mean? It's so there's there's no pressure. But what I, but I think there's a maturity. Um, there is uh, some seasonness to it, if you will. Uh, there is. I've learned to uh, that that gentleman you just spoke of. He says I, I've spoken to him also, and he says I have many different voices, and um, so I've learned to. I've learned to uh, use that uh, asset, if you will, in different ways in songs and, and trying to express myself in different ways when I do, um, you know, go off. And like, uh, like in this, the ballad, the ballad's going to sound like nothing. It's going to sound closer to, uh, it's going to actually, it's not even going to do that. It's, it's going to sound totally different than you've ever heard me sing ever. Hmm. And it's a more natural, um, it's a more natural, honest, uh, to the point song um that i've ever done and i i don't have any i don't feel any any pressure any influences uh this is a song that that i, I i'm singing kind of for myself in, in a way and um so no i appreciate that i it, it is it is uh you know it is it, there, there is truth to it when you've been in the business for a long time um, the way you feel about the, the groove that you have, that natural swing that that starts to develop, and um, I, I don't know, I'm sure that you feel the same way. But you're, you're a different player than you were when you were younger, right? And it's it's uh, and it's a cool thing, you know what I mean? And when I was young, and I used to look at older uh, gentlemen in the industry and stuff like that, and see what they were doing, they just had that. It was just it just felt settled and confident, but but not. Um, uh, it, it wasn't forced, and uh, and I think that on the new song, um, nothing new. You're going to feel an unforced, natural, honest vocal. So more mature and no more police yes. escorts out of Halifax, right? I'm sorry. Ah, I I more mature and no more police go escorts out of Halifax. <laughs> well, there'll always be some of that in me. Let me tell you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me let me talk to that point now. So this this new album, especially after the full length album is put out, is there an opportunity to see Spangali tour again? Well, one hundred percent. I I mean, um, I'm I'm and I know Dan feels the same way. I, all of us feel the same way. As soon as we can get out, we're out. And and one of my stops and 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 I I got and I'm truly honest when I say this. I look so forward to coming out to the East Coast. There's so many memories uh, out there, so many great people. Um, you guys, the East Coast to me is the most honest place in Canada. So if you're a fucking dick, you're gonna get told you're a fucking dick. You know, <laughs> exactly. you know and if exactly. you're, 
you know, so that's what I that's what I like about it. And I'm looking forward to having some beers with everybody out there and then and, and visiting again and and playing and um and hopefully the bars are all open where you guys can drag me around for a night and let's find out oh, yeah. see what trouble we can get in. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I and we'll make sure I got that we your number, brother. <laughs> we'll make sure we have a couple stretchers on the tour bus. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be holding on to my beer because I know what you guys do. You'll be kicking it the fuck over. I know how that works. <laughs> uh, we got uh, we got a room for you guys to play out here, too. I mean, it's in Dartmouth. Yeah. Um, room called Monty's and uh, great, great place. You know, they can seat close to 500 people. <laughs> yeah. um, throwback, you walk in there, you'll you get the crazy horse vibe of, of you know, what yeah. the place used to be. So it'll be cool. Um so you guys are talking about touring and all that stuff. And obviously nobody knows we're hoping it's going to start opening up here pretty soon. Um, what's it like for guys up there in Ontario to, you know, tell our viewers, cause we're kind of, we've been up and down. Um, is it as bad as what the media is portraying? I'll talk, ask you first, Dan, but I mean, we're here and, you know, basically you guys are going to be locked in your houses for years. Is it that bad or is it, is, is it overstated? Um, I, I would say everything's overstated in, in the media. I mean, is it, is the world safe? Uh, you know, I don't think things are super safe. Um, we Because we live in such a densely populated area um, near Toronto, of course, we're going to have, you know, and the, the, you know, just the population density alone is what creates those numbers. Um, I go outside. I'm a teacher. I go to school and well, until they shut us down. But uh, things are getting better. And, uh, you know, the more people that roll up their sleeves and take care of business, you know, the sooner we'll be back. But, you know, the one thing I can promise you and everyone who's listening to this is when Sven Galley comes back, better have a helmet on and be buckled in because it is, it's going to get nuts. Yeah, yeah. And I think when we, when we come out, you know, because of COVID and it's, we feel like uh, caged animals, we're bringing everything. We're bringing extra PA we're bringing lights we're bringing the whole gamut and just freaking go for it and and have a blast and you know what and I think that I think that when music starts up again and we're doing shows again um everybody's going to be uh respectful grateful and wow yep. I can't you know what I mean it's going to be a, a party well people took it for so, granted let's be honest so like, I think we all kind of did we all you know we all get older so, well, and the folks our age is like well, I only go out once every three or four months now, but I mean, because they just don't feel like they have the time or they're too busy or whatever the case may be, but they miss it. That's one common thing that we've had on the show. We've been doing it for a year now. It's like yeah. the people are craving live music. They need it. Yeah, I agree. 100%. We, um, you know, we had a, a shutdown and then a startup and then a shutdown and then a startup. Um, so I guess the past year, we've never got to 100% capacity. Um, and they're saying by July or August, we might get to that point. Uh, but one of the things that happened was they opened up in the summer and Dave and I went over to Halifax and it was actually, it was pretty cool after being shut down for three months. It was a Friday night. It was June 5th and just the energy that was on the streets. And I mean, you know what? Some places were only having like acoustic duos and stuff like that, but you could tell it was music that got people through the crappy stuff and they were really happy to be out and they were respectful. Yeah. All the shows we've done. It's been great. You're not allowed. You can dance at your table or table dance, as they say. But um, you know, but everybody's been very respectful. So uh, hopefully, you guys get to experience that very soon too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, you know, Andy's in Beijing, and, and th things are getting back to normal pretty pretty good over there. And but you know, our societies are are, are different. You know, over there, if you right. if you if you get told not to do something, you better not do it, or you're gonna get, you're going to jail. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here. Um, we're pretty, we're fortunate to, to be free, but, it, but it is, uh, but you see during things like this, um, a lot of not, you know, there's that, there's that portion of people that, that don't listen to the rules, you know? Um, and it's unfortunate, but now you, now you get to understand it and see it. And, um, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it too, because, uh, uh, everybody started to lose their minds, you know, my, my son, um, my son's in Italy right now playing soccer. And, and and he's in a bubble like everywhere he's going he's in a in, in a bubble but it seems um in europe that they just have a better grasp and uh and uh and um i don't know i, I don't know how to say it but uh, they pay attention to what 
was supposed to happen, you know? And I think that if, if we did back in the day when this all started, if we adhered to all the rules, if the lockdowns were as longer and, and stuff like that, yeah. maybe we'd be in a better place. Mm. But, um, you know, people will do what they want. Well, I guess in retrospect, we all stood, stood put or stayed put for one full month back in March of last year. It might have been gone. Who knows? But I mean, like, we can't talk about it. It is what it is. And we're learning with it to do with it. I like what you said there, Dan. It's like, you know, if, whether you agree with vaccines or testing or whatever, and we, we're not here to debate that. But I mean, yeah. we know that in order to get back to normal, uh, and I was listening to the radio today. Uh, baseball, the Toronto Blue Jays, until you know, they need to have an 85% team vaccination route before they can play, before they can travel. You know what I mean? So if you use the same mentality for a province or a country, if we get to 75% or 80% penetration for vaccines, well, then things are going to open up again. So whether you agree with it or not, who gives a rat's ass? Let's just do yeah. that. Thing. Yeah, you're right. So it's true. So, um, you guys, and we want to talk a little bit about. You. Obviously, we want to be respectful of your time. You know, it's a, it's a Friday night. Dan's Dan's got some food to eat and stuff. And Dave, <laughs> Dave, 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 Dave. but um, so uh, before we started, you, uh, Dan, you were talking about the strategy of you guys, and Dave, you covered it too. Full album on the way, but you want to you want to put out singles, which I think is the way a lot of guys and bands are doing it, and it makes sense. Um, this day and age of downloading and stuff. Um, I think it's a good, I guess, teaser. So, Dan, talk a little bit about what, what you guys are going to be doing over the next couple of months. So, Andy has been putting together a compilation of unreleased Sven Galley demos from um, <clears throat> 1991 to 1995. And step in any time, Dave, if I'm wrong. Um, That's yeah, I was fortunate enough to play on a couple of songs on those releases. And, uh, yeah, they're just really cool stuff and i think you know it's a really cool thing for people who follow the band i mean myself as a fan to you know be able to hear those songs and uh get into that experience along with that i mean our mentality is you can't just have something sitting you have to have something out you have to have something on the plate and then you have some, have to have something in the bullpen so yeah. you always have to have things moving because people forget really quick these days Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And within, you know, a month to six weeks is you have to have something out. And what we did with three is, you know, we put out two songs individually, then we recorded two and then we put out the EP. And um, at this point, in my opinion, and, you know, I'm obviously not a music industry expert, but from what I see and, uh, you know, unless you're the Foo Fighters or someone at that level, Megadeth, whatever, Justin Bieber, <laughs> whoever, right? Um, putting out a full-length album is not really beneficial for anyone. It, it dies really quick. And uh, I think you lose people's interest really quickly. And that's what I've learned along the way anyway. And uh, I know that I'm sort of the guy in the band that tries to push everyone. And I know that, you know, you need to have that person in the band, but I, you know, I don't want to be that person in the band that people want to punch in the face either. <laughs> <'Cause I'm... laughs> oh, oh, yeah. You, you, you've watched the pearly whites there, Dan. And who's going to punch you in the face? Are you kidding? Uh, <laughs> you'd, be you'd be surprised. But you raise a good point. I mean, how do you sell a full length album today, anyhow, when you have the majority of people have a 15 second attention span by watching a TikTok video? So, like, yeah. you know, but you're very good at that, Dan. Like, you are very much on top of the social media. You're all over it. You know, we talked about that last night with the guys from RFL. But yeah. that's what's so important today. People have they just want snippets. They just want little snippets to, to reel them in a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's different. It's different than when we were kids. You know, and we're all the same age. You went out, you bought the album, and you listen to the whole album over yeah. and over and over again. People don't have that mentality anymore today. Look, for I think. Uh, I I think that uh, I think that um, uh, Dan. I, I you know, in, in speaking with Andy, I think that Dan doesn't realize that that that. Um, he's the guy who fired or kindled the fire and got it going again. Now everybody's motivated because Dan, um, you know, had the nerve and to, uh, or, you know, the, the gumption, if you will, to, to call me and say, let's get together to jam. So this is all his doing. And we're really appreciative of Dan being in the band because he does push the social media. He does do all those things that, that none of us do or, or, you know, uh, 
uh, and um, and it's and it's great. Uh, he he touched on this 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 CD, and because of him um, pushing, you know, you know, pushing us, uh, it, it made Andy think about doing a, a demo um, CD uh, that's going to be coming out. Did he say the fall? Andy wants to do yeah. it in the fall, then. Yeah. And so the name of the CD is called Bombs and Battle Scars. Mm, okay. And it's uh, it's years of of demos and just raw stuff where I'm hitting boner notes all over the place and we're just trying to find ourselves in songs. But you know what? It's fun. It's it's cool. And um, there's some songs on there that people might recognize. I used to see us in clubs, and there's going to be songs on there that absolutely nobody's heard. That they're going to go, well, where did that come from? And, and now, and even we're listening to that those tracks now, going. Uh, no, that wasn't freaking half bad since in 1992, 91. Um, and how some of that stuff didn't make it to records. But now we're starting to, uh, um, you know, I, I think there's a, I think we have a lot more to offer. And I think that Sven Galli is going to be one of those bands that we're just going to keep going until till the end. And yep. our, our music will, might change just a little bit, but you're going to see, and what people will live through us is some some youth and and all the way through this maturity and and they're going to hear some of that angst in some songs and and they're going to hear some uh different uh, moods and and vibes and things that we're feeling and um at different times in our lives and uh yep. and uh, yeah so i'm looking forward to people hearing uh the that demo ep bombs and battle scars awesome so and, and when dan we had dan on the show he had a great line that he said spin gal he always like Correct, I'm paraphrasing, correct me if I'm wrong, but you always want to be the drummer in Sven Galli, is what you said. It's true. Yep, since 1987. <clears throat> I saw them. <laughs> I've had this evil plan since 1987. So, <laughs> I, like his, I, like it, I like his long game. He sticks it up for the long game, for sure. So June 11th, this is coming out. The, the, the single's coming out. What's, what's going to happen? We talked to the RFL guys. We get a little bit of a sense of... You know what's up, but uh, walk us through how you guys plan on rolling this out on the 11th of June. Um, well, the video is going to get premiered on Brave Words, and uh, Tim Henderson and I went to university together, and uh, metal Tim and him. We felt it, you know, to do the release through him would be the right thing to do. And then we have uh, the RFL promo team, and we also hired um, hired an independent promotion guy up here named John Asher who's going to be working Canada so basically the song has started charting in the US and we haven't even put it out wow. that's awesome so, so uh, awesome and, and I think that you know again you know being a person in a band but being also a fan of the band um, it's going to connect with a lot of the people who were you know the first album Sven Galley fans you know they're really like you know, just those guys. And um, that's great. And uh, I, I love the first record, but I, I've got to tell you, InWire is one of my favorite records ever made. And, uh, I, the, you know, it was just a weird time in music. And I, I remember I played in a band called Varga and uh, at the same time, and, you know, we got signed to BMG because we followed in Sven Galli's footsteps and Sven Galli brought the A&R guy out to see us. So, you know, with, again, part of my evil plan, I'm going to follow these guys until they need a drummer and they're going to get to their band. But basically, in 1991, all the, all the record industry buildings went sideways and everyone just flew out. As soon as Smells Like Teen Spirit came out, it changed the world. And I don't think that there's anyone on the planet that can argue with that. And, okay. uh, you know, coming, you know, if, if you can... You know, Metallica put out Load and Reload during that time. So everyone was going for that sort of alternative sound because you were irrelevant if you didn't. And so, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I love, uh, if you get a chance to listen to Envire and just like the songs, are, it's so dark. There's this dark undertone underneath it. And uh, is it Mike McPherson, Dave? I keep on getting his name, name wrong. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That, that guy's drumming blows me away. So it's Van Galley, like with Greg Gerson's drumming, Mike McPherson, and uh, Rob McEachern, who was a drummer before Greg, is also a fantastic drummer. And the original drummer, uh, Steve McGregor. Steve McGregor. Uh, yeah. 
he's a in, incredibly eclectic and funny, interesting dude. If you ever get a chance to meet him, he, he's something. You're not feeling a little <laughs> final tappy there, though, Dan? Where it's <laughs> 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 I was going to say, I I was gonna say there was a time when we called our, when, when me and Andy called the band Spengali Tap. Yeah, I'm saying I want to be the drummer of Spin Galley, but maybe I don't. <laughs> There's spontaneous combustion going on there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can survive. But watch it here, boy, dude. You know what? If I if I can say if I can say something about that because it is funny, um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, but the truth is, the the truth is. Um, there's a there's a there's a vibe between D, Andy, myself, and Sean, and um, and if, uh, and uh, until you know and like uh, Mike on and Wire, he had his vibe. Everybody had their different vibes, but it just seemed to all come together and gel. And there's a comfortability, like we're all comfortable, and it just seems like Dan fit in really well. And I've, I've told Dan this in the past. I, 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 I there's a, a big part of me that wishes that he was in the band back in that time yeah. um, because I feel very, very comfortable. He's, he's become a brother of mine and, uh, and we're, we're pretty close. And, um, and uh, he, he's definitely a part of our family, the Spengali family. And, I, and, and right now he's probably the head of the family because he keeps telling us what to do. You're yeah. like, okay, okay um, dad. Oh, okay, dad. <laughs> yeah. And it's a good thing that we are, we are social distancing because, like I said, no one can hit me from where we <laughs> live. Yeah, that's right. All good. And plus, a little time. plus my, my fiance will protect me anyway. She takes she takes care of people. <laughs> Speak of, hey, Dan, speaking of fiance, what is the when is the date when you get married? Uh, in 2022. Um, you know what? <laughs> I thought you had put you on a spot. Yeah, as you say, let, let, let's ask her. <laughs> You're stirring it up. Let's ask who's really wow. in charge. Yeah. Well, you missed, no you, missed, uh, you missed Dan being fed off the camera there. It was, yeah, uh, it was, it was, it was good. a little hot, to be honest. It was kind of nice. <laughs> a, little, a little envious, to be honest. But to your point, Dave, I mean, 30 years have. Happened. 30 years happened anyhow and obviously the music that comes up today in 2021 it's going to be different than it was in 1987 for sure you know what I mean? for yeah. sure it is but all that styles all that different music that that's occurred since then all your different lives and, and experiences that you've had makes for a more honest probably approach to what Svengali was and is and i'm looking forward to hearing the new album and your your your, uh, your demo bombs and was it the bomb i'm sorry bombs and Bob's and Battle Scars. Yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing those together, to be honest, because I think it'll, it'll make a lot of sense for a lot of folks. But, I yeah. mean, you were just... You were there. It was like the, the, the most pinnacle rock band I had ever seen in my life. Sean and I talked about this so many times. It's like, <laughs> you changed Canadian music for a lot of us in that age group, you know what I mean? That, that genre of music. And yeah. I applaud you for it, you know, and I applaud you for what you're doing today. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it. It's um, you know what? Like I, I, again, I'm not like a social media guy. I uh, at, at all. It's 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 just something I I, I don't I, maybe I don't know if it's good or bad. But when I do look at it and I see a lot of comments from fans in regards to we want to hear more of the first record stuff. We want you know can, can you we like uh, you know they like hurt because it sounds like first record stuff. Um, but first record stuff was. 1992, 1985, 87, 89, 88. You know what I mean? That's first record stuff, but there's an evolution like for, for everybody in life. Everybody kind of changes a little bit. And so that's where the bombs and, and um, uh, that, that uh, EP, or sorry, that uh, CD that's coming out uh, in the fall uh, kind of came from because to those people who like that, we're going to give them all that stuff and, and untouched, unfiltered mistakes, everything. They're going to hear Ross Svengali on the floor, um, you know, a few, few beers on us, in us at, at rehearsals, just giving her. And, um, right. and it's kind of, it's going to be interesting. And then, then I think, uh, I mean, we, I don't, I don't know if the final decision has been made yet, but then we're going to put on a couple new songs. Um, and I'm looking forward, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to you guys hearing the two new songs that we have oh, to put yes. out. I think these two new songs, I, I think that, uh, they're probably going to be some of the, I don't know. I mean, Dan, correct me if I'm wrong, but 
I think it's going to be some of the best stuff that we've done. And yeah. I'm looking forward to you guys hearing this stuff. It's cool, man. Right on. Like I, I, uh, I, I, I'm, I listen to when I'm writing a song or writing a Spangali song, I'll listen to it, you know, a few times here and there and, and whatever. But I find myself listening to this all the time because I just like what that band's playing. Like I'm so fortunate as a singer to yeah. to be singing for these guys. That they're so good. You know what I mean? I, I and what Andy gave me for nothing new to sing on. I, I emailed him today and I said to him, Andy, I hope I can live up to what you gave me to sing on. Mm. I, I that's what I emailed him today. Nice. Um, and the the other song that we have with that we're doing with Andy Curran. Um, it's fresh, it's new, it's catchy. And I think it's a blend between something new and something old and, and it's heavy and you can feel, you can feel Spangali, Coney Hatch, I'm a, I'm mother earth just smashed together with, with keyboards of deep purple in there. You know, arts, uh, one of my influences, I used to love, you know, knocking at your back door, you know, uh, perfect strangers, that, that album. Yeah. 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 So you're yeah, going to yeah. hear that in this in that song, and it's I, I got to tell you, I, I'm very, very, very proud of it, and I never say that about my music because uh, you know how close you are when you write something. If you guys are, you know, you guys play, you're yeah. close to it. I'm, I'm kind of like I never listen to yeah. it, but I find myself going back to this and and being proud of it um, this much, you know, later in life. You know, incredible. It'd um, be cool. We, uh, I, I told you this before, Dave, uh, when we had you on the first time. So I had the pleasure of opening for you guys at the Misty mm -hmm. Moon on the tour for the first album. And uh, I was thinking about this the other day. I, I, I kind of, there was a bunch of us, I wouldn't expect you to remember, but there was a bunch of us kind of standing around and we were kind of in the backstage area and a bunch of musicians came in. And you looked at one of them and you said, are you a musician? And the guy goes, yeah. He goes, your exact line. And I use a different form of it, but he was like, you, you said, well, musicians don't like us and we don't give a shit is exactly what you said. <laughs> and it just always did I say that? Thing. You did say it. And honestly, God, I was just like, very cool. Because we talk about all the time that if we're in the, if we're in the audience watching a band, drinking a beer, we've got no right to criticize anybody. We got to be respectful and support them. And conversely, if we're on the stage and you're going to be an arsehole, leave the show. And that that line to me just kind of stuck because it was just like, you know what? Uh, you're here to watch us. We're going to do this thing and kick you in the face. And if you don't like it, there's the door. And I, I just, that stuck with me for so many years. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was kind of our attitude. Like, you know, for whatever reason, and I don't, I don't know what it was, but although that we had a lot of people that loved the band, there was a lot of people that didn't like the band for different reasons. And and I didn't know what I didn't I I didn't know what it was. I mean, we just this is this is what you we stole were. all the we chicks. Were. You stole all the <laughs> chicks. That's what it was. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to say it. I, don't know I wasn't going to say it. <laughs> but it was um, it was a uh, it, it, uh, you know, and I hear like and now as we're back in the scene and people are saying different things about the band that we were kind of underestimated or underappreciated or undervalued or this and that and whatever. I challenge, I mean, when you, <laughs> we're still going and my challenge is yeah. to everybody else, where the fuck are you? Hey, you know what? And good on you. Cause I tell you, like, I remember the first time seeing you yeah. guys at the crazy horse and some friends of ours that were girls went and saw you guys the night before and they came back. Oh my God, they're great. We're just like, you're just saying that cause they're a good looking band. We went the next night and I mean, you guys looked amazing, but you could friggin' play. Um, you were the real deal, right? And I think, you know, musicians are, we're, we're a funny lot. If we think we're threatened, you suck, Dave. You <laughs> suck because you're better than me. And that's kind of how they look at it. And I, I truly think that that was probably what a, a lot of it was. Yeah. And that's fine. I mean, um, uh, you know, and I understand that. I mean, uh, that's just, that's, that's growing up. And yep. uh, today, when I go see bands, um, you know, as of a few years ago now, I'm standing there and I, and I, and I look at players and I, I listen to what they're doing and, and it's like, I really, you, you appreciate it instead of, you know, the other, yeah. the other way, but yeah, no, it's uh it is what it was and it was what it was back then. And uh, it was very, very competitive. I mean, like playing music in Toronto back then, the Toronto crowd was always the hardest crowd. Mm -hmm. When, when I, when we toured across Canada, when we were in England, Europe, Germany, Belgium, France, freaking all over the States, Every time I saw Toronto on the on the list where we were going, I'd go, oh no, we're going back because it was always a fight 
to um, yeah. to get you know to get them going, and that's just people know that about Toronto. It's a tough crowd because they they were very very spoiled with entertainment back then. Yeah, they had tons of options and stuff like that. But uh, I mean, you you go to Saskatoon, and they're 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 so thankful, and they're 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 half they're they're wasted at noon. And the show's at ten. You know what I mean? And uh, and the, the whole priming of of, uh, of the shows across the country back then, um, you know, it was like a day event getting ready for a concert. Um, in, in Toronto, it's uh, it was always a little different. But not to say they didn't appreciate it, but you had to earn it there. Well, I, I have a, that's a good I, point. No, I was just gonna say I have a badge of honor in Toronto. I was telling the story the other night of playing the Gasworks. And Sebastian Bach was in the crowd and told me that he thought I sucked. And I didn't take it personally. I was like, yeah, I get chirped by Sebastian Bach. Awesome. Right? So, and I know what you're talking about because, oddly enough, Newfoundland is the same way. In Newfoundland, there's a ton of wicked players. And you go over there knowing that if you're the least bit sucky, you're just not – you're going to get torn pieces. And it sounds weird, but that's the way they are over there, right? So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. But you know what your point is? uh, we We were in England. And uh, I remember we were doing acoustic promo tour in England. And, and um, I, you know, we, like on the acoustic side of Svengali, it was me, D, uh, me, D, and Andy went for, I think we were gone for like three weeks. And we were doing like acoustic shows, interviews prior to the tour there. And w- when me and Andy and D sat down to do acoustic stuff, we're not bad. We're, we're you know, not to say we're, we're pretty good. Like I'm great players, uh, D and my voice at that time, it blended nice. It sounded good. And I remember, uh, I remember playing, I forget what city it was. And we were doing a show in a bar, uh, acoustic show, and it was great. And we played, uh, 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 we played a sound garden song, which we played very well at the time. It, um, which I forget what song it was. And then this guy, this guy at the front of the stage said, that's fucking bollocks. And he turned around and walked away and went, Oh, okay, good. <laughs> good thing. Nah. So it is what it is. Do you think it's because you guys were probably branded as Sven Gelly from Toronto? You know, yeah, I mean, you're from Hamilton, Niagara Falls, but I mean, would it be harder to be a hometown hero? Cause we find that like that here in Halifax, you know, you can be, you have to have to make it outside of where you're from to be accepted where you're originally from. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Or is that you know how you folks you find? I, I, I think you nailed it. I think that, I think to make it, you need to move. Yeah. And I, I, you know, like we, we went hard in Canada. We went across, we went across Canada coast to coast 11 times. And in, in, in our career from in a Malibu, in a, in a freaking U-Haul to a tour bus when we started get, uh, get going. And the day that we made the decision to, you know what, let's everybody sell what they can sell. Let's put some money in a pot. Let's get a one-way ticket to Los Angeles on a tour bus and get dropped off at the Whiskey to play a show. Fuck. That was the most craziest thing I think I've ever done in my life. We took a one-way ticket on a tour bus, dropped us off with our gear on a curb, I'm in Los Angeles. I got freaking amps, stacks, drums. We're playing a show. And after show, the, the whole goal of that show was, okay, everybody find somewhere to live. <laughs> that was the cutest check then. So the question is, where'd you go? We all did. Okay. I mean, at the end of the night, at the end of the night, we were looking at each other. We all found places to stay and, and we're all laughing and okay, the gear's going here. We got, we got, we got a kick drum in somebody's, in somebody's apartment on Sunset Boulevard. We got, we got a Tom and a a guitar amp over there. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, and that's what we did. And then, um, our manager at the time, Donnie Blaze, he was just in Toronto and he was just calling every club, getting us shows. And we played, uh, the whiskey, the Troubadour. We, we played, um, all the Sunset Strip. We played Florentine Gardens down there. What year was that, Dave? I'm what sorry? year was that? What year that was, was that? That was, uh, that was 1990, I believe. It was like two, you know, 1990 or 1991. That's when that happened. And then when we were down there, and I remember at Florentine, we played Florentine Gardens, um, uh, and Rob Zombie was there. And um, after the show, we were like, you know, backstage, and it, the, the, the club was packed, and, and we really, we hit it that night. 
And um, and after the show, we found out there was somebody from a record company there back in, in from Canada. And uh, they came back and then we got a call the next day and David Bendeth called and said, we want to sign your band. So, okay. So we just packed up and we went away, but we ended up signing back up in Toronto. So we packed up and then came back to Toronto and got into a, a rehearsal hall in Toronto with David Bendeth working out. Um, and, you know, the first song we started jamming together was a song called Under the Influence. Mm. And that group that night, I'll never forget because that was the one of the first, I'll never forget it. It was uh, Dave came and we were just playing with this groove. The song was originally called don't call it love. And we started playing it and all of a sudden Dave changed a little bit and then D followed him and then Andy kicked in and all of a sudden the groove totally changed to and it went from something else to that. And then I look, we just, you just have that. We just look at each other and it went, yeah. Oh, and then I can feel, I literally felt the hair on my arms. Like I, I went, yeah. okay, we're onto something. And that night, uh, right after rehearsal, David Bendeth left and we're all looking at each other going, wow, that, that, that is pretty heavy riff. And, and, and we liked it. And so Dee's going, what do you think? And I said, I don't know. So I got in my car and I was driving home and I remember listening to the song on the way home. Cause we used to record it on a, on a ghetto blaster. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You know, so we had that going yep. we had a little some kind of little studios thing set up and I'm listening to it on the way home. And uh, the thing that I remember every time I go over top of the Burlington Skyway in, from like leads you into to Hamilton, I was on the top of the Burlington Skyway. And I remember in my head singing the chorus, the new chorus to Under the Influence. And by the time I got down to the bottom of the Skyway, I was on my phone to D playing the track, sing it to him, singing it to him on the phone. And he goes, awesome. So I went home that night. I wrote, I jotted down the, the lyrics that I had, drove back to rehearsal. And then the, the chorus to Under the Influence was written. And and every time I go over the skyway in Hamilton, I think about that night. Wow. That's wicked. Yeah. That's to awesome. this day, it's uh, it's weird. It's so still weird. We we want to be respectful of your time, so we're going to kick it back to smiling Dan down there. We got to. Uh, he, 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 you can. He's looking off the camera. He, he's. You can tell he's hungry. He wants to eat. The rest of <laughs> he wants some more grapes. Yeah. Um, but um, looking forward to this release. Um, and Dan, I want to give you prompts for two things. One, your social media presence is amazing. You're always on there. Yeah. Um, and the other one is as a drummer, you uh, you actually turned my mind a little bit. We last time we chatted, you were talking about Lars Ulrich, and he made a good uh, good argument there. And uh, not that I never thought he was good. I had the pleasure to meet him four times, and that kind of colored my opinion, if you will. But um, mm -hmm. so I get to know you a little bit. There's you and I kind of have some similar tastes and whatnot. So uh, I thank you for opening my uh, my eyes and ears to that but uh so release is coming up what can we expect from you guys over the next uh say six to eight months before you're going to get to put the album out um i think we pretty much laid it out we got the bombs and battle scars um i think the ballad single will be probably the next one dave can, again correct yeah. me if i'm wrong yeah and then after that will be the song by andy we're working on with Andy Curran, who also played bass on it. Oh, cool. And uh, yeah, yeah, there's always going to be Sven Galley stuff coming out. Like I said, we're, we all uh, were either professionals or we own businesses or we do stuff. We're not, we do, we do stuff. We're smart people, we're planners. And Andy, Andy Frank is uh, probably the smartest and most business savvy person I've ever met. And, uh, you know, his guitar playing is incredible too. I never get a chance to talk about his guitar playing, but he's, Dave mentioned it today. He's awesome. But it just, Dave, Andy, and myself were always, there's email strands going on every day and there's always planning going on. So this, this isn't a band that sits around. So yeah, there will be stuff constantly coming out. And, um, you know, we, we've been throwing around some, off the wall ideas about how to release the next two songs. Um, Dave and I have come up with some things that are kind of crazy. I don't want to mention it because it's, it's I don't know if it's going to go down or not, but it's nuts. But well, and trust me, well, anything we can help you guys to promote, we'll gladly do it. Yeah. And I'm glad, Dan, that you mentioned the fact that um, musicians in general aren't dummies. I think we get the best training ground, the best university out there in oh, some yeah. ways. I mean, you, 
you learn your marketing, you learn your craft, you learn your business acumen, you learn, like there's a ton of things that you learn, right? Yeah. Uh, and people don't realize that the, the two hours that's on stage pales in comparison to the 20 hours of BS that you got to deal with in yeah. other parts of the business, right? Is there just one thing I can add before we go? And you we were talking about things that we can learn. And there's something that you can't learn as a musician. And that's uh, having heart or playing from the heart. So when I was at the Rock and Roll Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, um, singer from The Who, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot his name. Daltry? Um, Daltry, Daltry yep. Yeah. Um, he's, they have a little clip of him talking and he said, I'll take a bum note and a bead of sweat over a per perfectly played performance without any effort any day. And uh, that really, uh, really resonates to me because um, I know as a drummer that my drumming is not perfect. And uh, I know that, you know, my technique is not perfect. And I know that, you know, I have so much room for improvement. But what I can tell you is that I play with every bit of my heart and soul when I play. Yeah, yeah. And um, that goes together with, with this band. That's why this works. Because when we're up on stage, we're not thinking about perfection. It's like uh, no. this sort of machine of feelings. And, you know, when we're playing songs like In My Garden, you know, the feelings that are going through me are just, you know, I get, I get tingles thinking, thinking about that song, you know, or, you know, Tide-Eyed Skies. And that's what I think really separates, you know, Sven Galley from, from a lot of bands out there. And that's what makes a band great. It's not how great you can play or how flawless your technique is. It's the heart and soul. Well, I don't, I don't think anybody can, they see any more of those pictures of those mangled bloody hands that you post. I don't think anybody <laughs> can question your heart, my friend. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Because it's just that, it's, it's, that's exactly what Sean and I picked up on back in, in 1986, 87, when we first saw this band. It's like, oh my God. It was so real, so authentic, because probably you're right, it was coming right from their heart. And I understand your fascination with the band back then too, Dan. I was like, <laughs> I, I get it, you know, and, and this is why, like, so you're such, we're such big fans of yours and we appreciate you being on our show. Thank and you, anything we could do in return, like to help promote what you're doing in the future, Guys, we're all over. Like we're Wait, big. You know, fans. you know what, guys. If I if I can say it, it's guys, it's guys like you guys in your program that toes the line, and you're towing the line, and uh, and we re we appreciate that. So it's it's an effort for for all of us that love music, love where we came from, and we all are looking in a direction where we're all going. And and I look forward to uh, to hanging out with you guys when things open up. And yeah, well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna insist the first place we go is we go east, and yeah. uh, and I'm looking forward to just hanging out with you guys. It's gonna be fun. We'll have you. Well, not I call, hope, come. I hope so. We'll, you don't we'll have a choice. A gig. <laughs> For sure. It's awesome. Dave, Dan, thanks so much. Thank and uh, looking forward to this release coming up. Go enjoy your food there, Dan. It looks right, good. Hey, you know what? Can I ask one question before I go? Before sure. I need to know where I can order uh, a Barstool's uh, T-shirt because I'm going to be wearing them on stage. I just need to know where I can get one. You don't even know where to order. We'll get you one, my friend. <laughs> All right. We're working on it right now, brother. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little little scoop here. Uh, the guy that we have that does our uh, graphic stuff is actually coming up with like a tour shirt idea. What it's going to be is it's going to be all the interviews that we've had to date. So you guys will be on there. Um, so there'll yeah. be the, the uh, logo in the front and that in the back. So as soon as we have some, we will get the both of you. Yeah. So you take, uh, what, do you, what do you take, Dave? What size? Me? Uh, well, I am, uh, it depends, uh, it depends on the time of year. In, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the winter, in the winter, I've been told I could be a triple XL, but in the summer and when we're touring, I'm a medium large. Just like the old <laughs> days, right? You yeah. You know, we'll get you those, no problem, guys. Thanks so much for doing this and uh, looking forward to June 11th. It's going to be fun. Looking forward to some, more of the tunes. And um, Dan, you keep being a beast, my friend. Hey, yeah. awesome. Thanks, man. Awesome. See you guys. Yeah. We will be promoting the shit of this song. We'll be promoting the shit of it. Guaranteed, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Really appreciate Great. it. Great meeting you guys. <laughs> Boston.